Welcome to Pot 2 of Ostodo Kit. Welcome to Pot 2 of Ostodo Kit. We're going to talk about five different mechanisms for games that you can add to your collection or you can buy for somebody else who's starting out their collection. These games are going to be readily available at stores like Bones and Noble or Target. So let's get started. Yeah, let's just dive right in here. So, real-time games. Uh, Fuse, I would say Fuse is definitely easy to obtain and it is the, the rule overhead is light. It comes with an app. Basically, you have a timer and you have five minutes to, or sorry, ten minutes to basically put some dice down in certain patterns to get rid of the bomb. Absolutely. It is definitely a cool game to play with a group of people, um, and it's cooperative. You have to defuse this bomb together before the timer on the app runs out. It could be fun. Like, when we meet people at cons, it defuse. It's got me sweating just thinking about it, because there is some stress in that game. Let's do abstract. Let's do abstract, okay. All right, so we have a collection of um, some straightforward games, depending on what you want to get into. So we're going to start out here with Hive. Hive is one of our favorite beach games. Um, it is abstract. You are playing with small hexagonal pieces and every symbol, so every bug on these um, tiles are there to protect and attack the other uh, team's queen bee. Mm -hmm. So it, nice chunky pieces, yeah. easy to take to the beach, throw in uh, a bag. If you get it wet, not a big deal. And this is the Hive, I think they call it the Hive Pocket version. There's a couple different versions of Hive. There's more of like a big box one where the components are a little bit bigger, but not much more. And there's a black and white version that uh, just looks slick. Then we have Reef. Now this is a, um, basically you're trying to fulfill different contract cards by building out a coral reef based on colors. And you're doing things based on the levels as well as the color patterns. So interesting very easy rule set and great to play if you are you know just introducing yourself to abstract games because you can always accomplish something yeah i would almost say this one's like an abstract plus a little bit because it's abstract the way you're building out your patterns but you're also doing a little bit of set collection and like goal fulfillment so it's it's like it's a little bit of abstract but it's also you have a little bit more going on in there i'll just jump right to Azul. So this, this is one of the most popular ones on the market, as I flip it around that nobody will be able to see. Uh, and you can get this game everywhere, and it's basically, I like to say, it's an instant classic. Yes, it, it's a great game. They have different versions of it. They have stained glass versions. They have uh, a variety of expansions now as well that can come out for this game. So you can get into this system and kind of spread your wings as you learn. Mm -hmm. um, I played it for the first time at a con. I want to say... Four or five years ago, <laughs> yeah. and I loved it mm -hmm. um, because there's kind of a little bit of a take that aspect to it um, if you want to, mm -hmm. but really simple rule set again and easy to dip your feet in. Yeah, scales well, and production values are, are kind of second to none with what you get there. Card driven games. So, what a card driven game basically is, is you get hands of cards and you have to do certain actions with it, and usually there's some area control involved. But with a card-driven game, you get operation points. Sometimes they're good for you, and other times you have to actually play cards that actively hurt you. So it's a different kind of mechanism in game. Twilight Struggle, I would say, is like the most popular card-driven game. And then there are some of these smaller ones that have come along that you can kind of get your feet wet with. 13 minutes, it's literally 13 cards in 13 minutes, so that's a very easy place to start. And uh, Watergate, which has become more popular. I don't know if you can get this at the Barnes & Noble. I might be breaking the rules, but you can find this on Amazon. It's pretty easy to get in almost every game store, and it's a simpler version, yet it's really good in two players and small box. And great to get yourself into it. There mm. are other card-driven games um, that are quite hefty, um, but these yep. are great ones to get uh, started into the genre. Woco Placement. So we picked some really straightforward ones to get you started, um, but they're not, even though they're bright pink colors and whatnot, they're not necessarily girly games to get that out there. First one, teeny tiny box. So if you are getting yourself started, this is the part of the tiny epic series of games, and it's tiny epic dinos. 
uh, or dinosaurs. Fabulous production in this box from your dinosaur meeples. And you are basically ranching different dinosaurs. And you are trying to fulfill contracts um, by doing different actions and putting down your ranchers in order to do different things. And each worker you put down gives you a different action. And that's what a worker placement game is. Yeah, I think it's safe to say it's like a dino farming game. And definitely reminiscent of Agricola, which was like the game that really launched modern day worker placement games. So it's a great place to start. Uh, yeah, you can find this kind of everywhere. Great box. It's it's really, I, I don't think we were expecting that much going into this. And we both really enjoy this. It's great game. And it's also a really reasonable price yes. to see what you think about it. So not only is it a space saver, but it's a great value uh, game in order to test out Worker placement. That's a good point. I'm just looking around at the table, and everything that we have here is is fairly inexpensive, at least in the land of board games. Next up is Toji. Now, this is a game that Matthias and I bought. Matthias tried to talk me into it for a long time, and I refused. Um, because, let's be honest, the box art didn't sell me. And I'm a theme individual. But, it is a fantastic game i mean this box is fairly light but it's because it doesn't come with a board the board is actually made up of cards and you're putting down your meeples to take different actions but the cool mechanic of this one is other players might be able to steal a card that you want or take an action from you mm -hmm. based on um player order and things like that so it's a i would say a great starter game, but maybe not the first one if it's your very first board game. I don't know. I Maybe not your first board game, but if it's your first worker placement, I think you could go right into this. It's two-player only, so that's something you need to be aware of. But I don't think it's that complex, and this thing has been around since I don't even know when it was originally printed. 2018. It, well, 2018 is, is this, this reprint, reprint but I, I feel like it's close to 10 years. There's tons of how-to-play videos and... Everything else uh, based on that. Uh, Pie Town is a worker placement game that I think kind of fits this whole genre in the starter kit that it's easier to get this to the table with people that might be a little trepidatious about playing more hobby craft games. Uh, obviously, as you can tell, it's a very bright, colorful game. Uh, and it's easy. Like, it's... I don't want to say it's easy, but it's easy to learn. It's easy to get into. It's kind of like dice placement, and you're running a, a pie market against other people and competitors. So... This one really surprised me as well. The scores on BGG are not great for this. They're like six and a half or something. I'm not 100% sure why. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, and the neat part of this one, so this still fits into Woco placement, but a lot of people will call it dice uh, Woco or dice placement games. And the dice are going to control the number of actions that you get to take or what you get to do with those die. So um, it's a little bit more in depth than when you're just putting down a meeple and you're taking whatever action is there. Here your dice actually do control what you're able to do. Um, but again, custom die, lots of upgrades and things that you can do. So great introduction to uh, worker placement with the ability to upgrade and contract fulfillment. And dice placement. And yeah. dice placement. Yeah, that's a good, like, almost a sub-genre now. Yes. Deduction games. We never played a deduction game up until a few months ago, and I think we actively enjoy them. So yes. So we have the Sherlock Files there is a series of this. This is number four. Uh, and we have Chronicles of Crime, and I think there are three or four of these as well at this point. So these are both easier ways to get into the deduction kind of escape room style games. And the, the really interesting part of these are they play fabulous at two, mm -hmm. but they also play fabulous at larger player counts. So you're looking for a game to play with a group of people after dinner. You're looking for something that you can throw in your pocket. We take these. We just grab one deck of cards and the little case story. Three and cases, we Nikki. And we throw them in mm -hmm. our... Uh, I throw them in my post and we can take them to a restaurant. We take them camping. Um, the only downside to these kind of games are we are people who love replayability. Here you get three cases. You play them three times. But it's not like the game is ruined. It's just you need to sell it on the secondary market at a con. Or if you have a good friend, pass it on to somebody who has not played the game. Um, because once you play the case... Yeah. 
there's really no purpose in playing the case a second time. Um, on the back of the box, it does say, you know, you can be the observer of other people and get your entertainment there. Maybe for you, that's great. Yeah. For us, deduction is kind of one and done, but you do get a lot of value because there are three games in the box, and then you can either resell it or pass it on to a friend. Yeah, if you have like a gaming group, you know, that's version four, have somebody buy three, you buy four, swap at the end. So that is part two of the starter kit, the board game starter kit.